Hello everyone. In today's session, we will use Terraform and infrastructure as code tool and demonstrate its use to deploy a true tier architecture in AWS. So we will architect a two tier architecture that consists of the following. So we will use a VPC with two public subnet and two private subnets and a load balancer so that will direct traffic to the public subnet and one EC2 instance in each public subnet and a RDS MySQL instance in one of the subnets. So these are the table of contents which we are going to learn today. So let's start. So what is AWS two-tier architecture? So AWS two-tier architecture is a common deployment pattern used for web applications in the cloud. It consists mainly two components or tiers. So first component is web server tier. So this tier is responsible for serving web pages and handling user requests. It typically includes load balancer, web server, and application server. So let's take a closer look. So it has two components, load balancer and web server. So a load balancer distributes incoming traffic to multiple web servers, improving the performance and availability of the application. So AWS provides two types of load balancer. So first is application load balancer and network load balancer. Next, web server. So web server are responsible for serving web pages to the user's browser. So they can handle static content such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And web servers can also execute dynamic contents as such PHP, Python, or Ruby on Rails. So we are using web server in this practical called as Nginx. Next, we will learn about database tier. So this tier is responsible for storing and managing data used by the web application. So it typically includes a database server and associate story. So let's look at the components of the database tier. So first is database server. So a database server stores and manages data used by the application. So AWS provides a variety of database options, including Amazon Relational Database Service, which is RDS, Amazon DynamoDB, and Amazon Aurora. For storage, it is used by the database server to store the data. So AWS provides various storage options such as Amazon Elastic Block Store and Amazon Simple Storage Service, as well as Amazon Elastic File System. So the two tiers are separated by a firewall or security group to restrict access to database server from the internet. So this architecture will provide highly scalable and fault tolerant and as well as it provides a separation of concerns between the web and database tiers. So why do we use two-tier architecture? So two-tier architecture is employed by for web applications in the cloud due to several advantages. First one is simplicity. So the architecture is straightforward with two distinct tiers, which is web and database. So it will make easier to design, deploy, and manage compared to more complex architecture. Two-tier architecture also provides scalability in which it separates the web and database tier, which allows independent scale. So this means that if the demand on the web server increases, you can scale that tier without necessarily affecting the database tier and vice versa. So two tier architecture can use to increase the performance by using load balancer in the web server tier, which enhances performance by distributing incoming traffic across multiple servers. So this ensures efficient utilization of resources and improved response time for the users. Fault tolerance. So the isolation of the web as well as for the database tier contributes to fault tolerance. If one tier experiences issues or failures, the other can continue to function, minimizing the impact on the overall application. Secure. As two-tier architecture, we provide a security by placing a firewall or security group between the web and the database tier. So it is easy 
to access to the sensitive database server from the internet which is restricted and it will enhance the overall security posture of the application so now let's learn about the difference between two tier and three tier architecture so the number of tier for two tier is as we know two which is web server tier and database tier so for three tier it consists of web server tier, application tier, and database tier. These are the components of the respective architecture. Next is the responsibility. So web tier it serves web pages and handles user requests, and the database tier stores and manages the data. While in three tier, the application tier manages the business logic. So scalability in two tier the independent scaling of web and database tiers and in three tier the difference is only that we use the application for scaling flexibility so limited separation of concerns between presentation and the data and in three tier there is a clear separation of presentation business logic and the data layer so the complexity is simpler in the two-tier architecture, where in three-tier architecture, it's more complex design, but it can add flexibility and scalability. So the performance in two-tier is improved by using load balancer in the web tier. And for better optimization of performance, in three-tier, we use the application tier as a component. Use cases. So suitable in two tier it is suitable for simpler application with fewer scalability and flexibility requirement and in three tier it is for used for complex application with varying scalability which needs a clear separation of concern so example of aws services for two tier is ec2 instance for web server and rds or dynamodb for or database and for in three tier aws services can be used for web server which is ec2 for the application tier we use ecs or lambda and for database same rds and dynamic which is used in 2t so security as firewall separates web and database tier for access control two tier is secure while on the other hand firewall can be implemented between each tier for fine-grained access control in three-tier architecture. Next is the fault tolerance. So isolation of tiers provides same fault tolerance in two tier, and in three tier there is a better fault tolerance with separation of application layer. So as two tier is easier to maintain due to fewer components, and in three tier it requires more careful management as it consists of three layers. Now we will learn about the two-tier architecture. So as you can see the diagram, so we are using a provider AWS and the region, which is a geographical area that consists of more than two availability zones. So AWS has multiple availability zone in worldwide. For example, as US East West 1, EU West 2, AP South East. So we are currently using AP South 1. So each AWS region is a separate geographical area which is entirely independent of the other regions. So as you can see, we are using virtual VPC means virtual private cloud. So it is a logically isolated section of the AWS cloud where you can launch the AWS resources. So in this scenario, we have created two public subnet and two private subnet. So what is public subnet? So public subnet are associated with a route table 
that has the route to the internet via an internet gateway. So the EC2 instance which we are going to use is directly accessible to the internet by using the internet gateway and the private subnet don't have a direct route to the internet. So they are typically used for resources that should not directly accessed by the internet. And we are currently using the availability zone as AP South one, which is Mumbai. And as you can see, application LB means it is a load balancer. So we have two EC2 instance in our two public subnet and one RDS instance in the private subnet. The two EC2 instance are accessible to the internet by using internet gateway and a private subnet has RDS instance. So next is application LP. So as you can see, the, it is called as a load balancer. So it is used to distribute the incoming traffic across these two instances. So the EC2 instance are placed in a public subnet, as we know, to handle in user request from the internet. So this RDS MySQL instance is set up in the private subnet. So this will ensure the database is not directly accessible to the internet, providing an additional layer of security. So it manages the database operation for, a, for example, as read and write operation. So it is placed in private subnet to provide security. So now we will learn about the components that consist the two tier architecture that consist in two tier architecture. So we will deploy our VPC with with header block, and this is the IP which will isolate the network for our resources. Next. Within the VPC, as we have seen the diagram, we will create two public subnet with CIDR IP. This is the IP 10.0.1.0/24, and each public IP will be each public subnet will be in a different availability zone for high availability. Next, we will create to private subnet with CIDR block IP consisting till 10.0.30 till the range of 10.0.4 IP. So each will be in a different availability zone. Next, we will deploy an RDS instance within one of the private subnet for data storage. Next, we will set up application load balancer to distribute the traffic to the public subnet for the high availability. Then we will deploy the EC2 instance in each public subnet. So we have we will create two public subnet and then we will deploy two EC2 instance for the respective public subnet for the high availability. And then we will provide access to the internet by using internet gateway and elastic ips for ec2 instance so these are the prerequisites which need to be installed so you need to install aws here like and you should have an aws account to perform the practical and the code editor which i have used is visual studio code you can simply download it from in Google. So now we will start with the implementation. So this is just a summary view of the Terraform files in Visual Studio Code. So first we will create 
uh, provider.tf file. So this file in Terraform is a configuration file that specifies the cloud provider, which we are currently using as AWS. And it will correspond to the plugin that Terraform will use to manage resource in that provider. So provider.tf file is used for declaration, authentication detail, and it is used for the region specification and additional settings. So as you can see, this is the Visual Studio Code Editor and I have created a file, a folder named two tier architecture AWS. Now I will create one file name as provider.tf. So I will just copy this and paste the editor. So the first block indicates the start of the Terraform configuration. So it contains the global setting for the Terraform execution. And the required, required providers will specify the required providers for the Terraform configuration, which is AWS. So in this case, we are declaring AWS provider. Next. Next, we will learn about the second block. So this block will configure the AWS provider specifically its allies as AWS. And we will specify the region which we are using. So we are currently using region name AP South one, which is Mumbai. The profile is equal to default. So this line specifies the AWS name profile to use. In this case, it is set to be default, which typically corresponds to the default AWS CLI profile configured on the machine running Terraform. So I have I have used AWS CLI and in that I have typed AWS configure command where I have entered access key and the secret key. And then it is stored in the user AWS. So simply you can type here as profile is equal to default. You can also create more profile in the user section according to your requirement so this configuration will set the foundation for provisioning aws resources using terraform in the specified aws region and profile next file we will create the network resource.tf So in our projects or any Terraform project, the resource file plays a crucial role as it holds the configuration for the essential network infrastructure required by the application. So this will encompasses defining a virtual private cloud and establish isolated network environment, configuring the subnet, setting up internet gateway, and defining the route tables and orchestration of load balancer. So now we will create a VPC in our network resource.tf file. So first we will create VPC. So the first line declares a resource block of type AWS 
VPC with the resource alias name as VPC. So we have given the AWS VPC name as VPC. Next, next we have set the setter block for the VPC to the IP, which is 10.0.0 slash 60. So this is the range of the private IP address. Next, we have the attribute called as instance tenancy, which specifies the inst that instance launched in the VPC will use the default tenancy, meaning they will run on shared hardware. Next, we have given the tag name as VPC project. Now we will create internet gateway for the public subject. So the second resource we have taken as AWS Internet Gateway and we have named it as IG. And so this will declare a resource block for Internet Gateway. So next is VPC ID. So this line associates the Internet Gateway with VPC created. Next is the tag name which I have given as IG hyphen project. Now we will create two public subnet. So I have created two public subnet where I have taken the resource name as AWS subnet as we need to create a subnet. So first I have taken public one subnet and public two subnet. And in VPC ID, I have created our ID name as AWS VPC dot VPC dot ID. And next in the cider block, I have mentioned the IP address, which is 10.0.1.0 slash 24. And I have given the name availability zone. I have selected AP South 1, which is Mumbai. And map public IP. So this attribute will enable the automate automatic assignment of public IP address to instance launched in this subnet. And then I have taken the tag name, which is public one for the first public subnet. Next, I have created similar as first configuration, second for the second public subnet. So as you can see, just I have change the availability zone which is 1b and in first public subnet i have taken as 1a so this will create two public subnet in one availability zone which is our ap south 1 and for the second public subnet i have given name as public 2 now we will create now after finishing for creation of public subnet, we will create two private subnet. So I have taken two private subnet block. So the VPC ID 
which we have taken is vpc aws vpc dot vpc dot id which is the subnet will be created and right? the cedar block is i have taken ip 10.0.3.0 slash 24 and the availability zone i have selected is ap south one a and as we all know that map public ip on launch so this will automatically assign the public ip to instance but as this is a public subnet you can see it is true but for private subnet it is not accessible for the internet so make sure that it is false next i have given the tag name as private one for one of the private subnet created and next i have created another private subnet in which i have taken the vpc id created first as same aws vpc dot vpc dot id and the cider block which consists of ip 10.0.0 slash 24 and the ability zone i have selected is ap south one and the map public ip on launch is false and the tag name for the second private subnet is private two next we will create security resource dot tf file So the security dot resource tf file in Terraform is a vital for configuring application security, which will focus on security groups for EC2 instance and load balancer. So within this file, we will define a security group for configuration for EC2 instance and specifying the open ports and the allowed protocol for inbound and outbound traffic. For instance, we might permit HTTP and SSH traffic on ports 80 and 22, ensuring internet access for web traffic and SSH access for a local machine. So additionally, this file configures a security group for load balancer, detailing the role for traffic between the load balancer and the EC2 instance. So proper configuration of this file is essential for a secure application controlling traffic flow within and outside the VPC. So this minimizes security risk, ensuring compliance with relevant regularization and standard. So after creating security resource.tf file in Visual Studio, we will create a security group for a load balancer. So we have taken the resource name as AWS security group. So we can refer this code from the official website of Terraform, which is Terraform registry. So this website name is registry.terraform.io. So here you need to just select the provider name, which we are currently using as AWS. So click on AWS, then click on documentation. So here you just need to type the resource name which you want. So in our current case, we we need AWS security. So just enter. So as you can see in virtual private cloud, we can find our resource, which is AWS security group. And here you can refer the code to create the security groups for the respective.
Now, first we have created a security group for a load balancer. So we have given the name as ALP SC for our first security group. So this will set the name of the security group to ALP hyphen SG. So in description, it just provides the description of our security group indicating that it intended for application load balancer. And we have provided the VPC ID, which is AWS VPC dot VPC dot ID. So this will associate the security group with VPC, which we have created. Next is the increase and egress block. So the increase block defines the inbound rules for the security group. In this case, we are allowing the incoming traffic on all ports and the protocol we start from the zero to port zero and protocol is minus one so this block will allow the incoming traffic on all the ports next block is egress block so this block defines the outbound rules for the security group similar to the ingress rule Now next, we will create an application load balancer. So the resource which we are when we have to create a load balancer is AWS load balancer and we have gain, given the name for the load balancer is project application load balancer so it will be easier to refer you so i have taken the name as project alp next the name of the application load al load balancer is alp next the attribute internal is set to false. So this line we specify that ALB is not internal, it is external. And the load balancer, which we have selected, as we have learned, there are two types of load balancer, which is network and application. But in our case, we are using application load balancer, which is suitable for the HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Then we have created the security groups. So this will create uh, earlier using the security group ID, which is AWS security group ALB.ac.id. Next for the subnet. So this line will, as we are using load balancer for the public subnet. So this ID, will be easier to refer that we are using the load balancer for the public subnet. So it is where the ALB will be deployed for the public subnet. Next, we will create an application load balancer target group. So we have taken the resource name as we need to target the group as AWS load balancer target group. And we have taken the name as project TG. As you can see, this is our name for the application load balancer to target the group. And the port which we are using is 80. So this line will specify the port on which target we will receive the traffic and the protocol we have set as HTTP. So this will target the group which are using HTTP protocols and the VPC IT as earlier we have given AWS VPC dot VPC ID and it will depend on the AWS VPC. 
next we will create target attachment so the resource for target as a attachment we have given as aws load balancer target group attachment you can also refer this from the terraform registry as shown early and the name we have taken is and the name we have taken is dg attach one so the target group ARN is equal to AWS RP target group dot project. So this line will specify an Amazon resource name for the target group. And we need to specify the ID, which is the ID for the EC2 instance. So currently we have not created the EC2 instance, but I have given given the uh, first instance name as web1 so it will create the target id for our instance 1 as well as for the instance 2 as shown below and the port is 80 which will the target will receive the traffic so it will depend on the aws instance 1 and 2 which are located in the public subnet Next, we will create a listener. So the resource name as we need a listener, we have resource name as AWS load balancer listener. So this line I declared a resource block for an AWS application road balancer listener named as listener LB. And the load balancer ARN is equal to AWS LB project ALB dot ARN, which specifies the ARN of the application load balancer associated with the listener. And the port is 80 on which the listener listens for the incoming traffic and the protocol as you know is http where it indicates the listener and the default action so it will define the default action for the listener specifying that it should forward the traffic to the target group associated with the application load balancer. So this configuration sets up an AWS security group for an application load balancer, creates the application load balancer, and we have defined a target group from the application load balancer. And we have attached the EC2 instance respectively to the target group. And we have, lastly, we have set up a listener for the application load balancer. So next we will create file name as route table resource dot ta. Now we will create a route table. So the route table file is used in Terraform, which is responsible for configuring the route tables so it is crucial for directing network traffic within a virtual private cloud so by creating a route table to route traffic through the internet gateway we will get internet access to the vpc so it will define the route table to specify how the network traffic is directed between the subjects in the vpc and it will 
associate the route table with specific subnet determining how traffic flows within the VPC and the rules for each route table determining the next of our traffic based on the destination cider blocks and the internet and gateway routes configures the routes for internet bound traffic often involving an internet gateway ensuring connectivity outside the VPC. Now we will create a route table to the internet gateway. So first we will create a route table to the internet gateway. So it will help our public subnet to get access to the internet. So as we need to create a route table, we have taken the resource name as AWS route table, which we can also refer this code from the Terraform registry. So we have named as named it as project RT. So and the VPC ID is equal to AWS VPC dot VPC, which will associate the route table with a specific VPC using the ID and the route block will define a route to the route table cider block is equal to zero dot zero dot zero slash zero which will specify the destination cider block for the route as indicating all traffic and we have provided the gateway id as aws internet gateway dot ig dot ind which will specify the internet gateway as the target for the route allowing the outbound traffic to the internet and the tag name which we have given is project rt now we will associate our public subnet with the route table So to associate the public subnet with route table, we have taken the resource name as AWS route table association given the respective name for the public to public subnet as public route one for the first public subnet and public route two for the second public subnet and the subnet ID which we have created for the public subnet one is AWS subnet dot public one dot ID and the route table ID for the public subnet one is aws root table dot project rt dot id so this is same for the public route too now we will create a security group to allow incoming and outgoing traffic for both the subnets public as well as private So this will create a security group for public and private subnet. So as we need to create a security group, we have taken the resource name as AWS security group and given the name as public for the public subnet. So we have set up the name for the security group as public sg so the description for our reference i have given as it will allow the web and ssh traffic for the security group and the vpc id will associate the security group with the specific vpc which is vpc id is equal to aws vpc dot vpc dot id and the ignis, increase and decrease block we define the inbound and outbound rules for the security group so the first rule allows tcp traffic on port 80 
HTTP from any source and the second rule allows TCP traffic on port 22 which is port of SSH from any source and it will allow the traffic inbound rules anyway and for egress block it will define the outbound rules for the security group so it allows the outbound traffic to any destination ip next we will create a resource security group for the private and we have given the name as private sg name and the description is for to allow web tier and sss traffic and we have specify the vpc id which is aws vpc dot vpc id and we have set up the inbound and outbound rules so the ingress block will define the inbound rules so the first rule allows the tcp traffic on port 3306 assumed to be for mysql and from the specified header block it allows the traffic from the security group so the protocol is tcp and the header block containing the ip 10.0.0 slash 16 and we have given the security group id for the public one and the next block we can see the tcp traffic on port 22 which is of ssh which is derived from any source and for ignis ingress proc the output rules for the security groups allows the output traffic outbound traffic to any destination ip so this configuration will set up route tables associate subnet with route tables and create the security groups with specific ingress and ingress rules so these security groups are designed to control the traffic flow from public and private resources within the specified VPC. So this will help to isolate a private subnet from a public subnet. Next, we will create ec 2 resourcetf file where we will create our two instances for respective to public subnet. ec2 resource.tf5 so this file serves as a configuration file especially specifically designed for defining and provisioning aws ec2 instances now we will create ec2 instance Two EC2 instances for two public subnet. So I have taken the resource name as AWS instance as I need to create AWS instance and I have given the name as web1 and web2 for the second instance. And I have used the AMI as Ubuntu and it's the ID of the Ubuntu and the instance type for I have used for now as the requirement is for t2.micro. So this AMI is an Amazon machine image to use for the EC2 instance. And this is the AMI ID. So I have currently used as Ubuntu. And the instance type is I have selected as t2.micro. So the virtual hardware of the EC2 instance is t2.micro. And the key pair, key name, which I have created is two tier key pair. And the availability zone is AP South 1A. And the security IDs, respective form, we have created the security group. We have mentioned, we have to mention here the security group IDs for the respective two public subnets. For this subnet ID is public one, and for second instance, the public ID is subnet ID is public two, and the associated public IP address is set to true, which will indicate that EC2 instance should be assigned 
to a public IP address. And for the first instance created, I have given the name as web for instance. And for the second, as you can see, the associate public IP address for the second instance is also true. The name for the second instance I have given as web2 instance. Now we will create a next file, which is db database resource.tx file. So the database resource file in Terraform is crucial for provisioning on rds database in aws so it will configure the mysql rds database specifying the instance class allocated storage and the backup window so this file will allow you to customize the database instance classes storage types and backup schedules to optimize performance durability and availability the proper configuration is vital for ensuring the reliability scalability and data integrity for our application so now we will create a database subnet group and create a database instance. So as we have created a security group ID for private subnet and in private subnet, they wish to our database. So the first we have indicate the name as database subnet group where it will declare a RDS database instance named as db subnet which we have created earlier and the subnet IDs for the respective private subnet is AWS subnet private ID private one id and aws private two id and the name is db hyphen subnet so now we will create a database instance so the resource i have given as aws db instance to create a database instance and the name for the resource i have given as aws db instance and the name is project db so we will allocate the storage, which is the amount of storage allocated to database instance in gigabyte. So it is 5 GB. And the engine which we are going to use for our database instance is MySQL. And the engine version which I am currently using is 5.7. And the instance class which now I required is t2.micro as t2.micro can be used for the free tier account and the identifier name i have taken as db instance which specify the unique identifier though for the database instance and the db name as we have created project db and the description is given for the db name is same. so the username which i have taken is admin and the password I have given is password so next is db subnet group name so this will associate the database instance with the previously created database subnet group and the vpc security group associate the database instance with the security group private sg and the public publicly accessible is set to false we specify the database instance is not publicly accessible from the internet and the skip final snapshot attribute is set to be true which specifies whether a final database snapshot should be created before the database instance is deleted so here it is skipped to creating the final snapshot so this configuration will set up an RDS 
subnet group containing private subnet and an RDS database instance with specific configuration. So including storage, engine, version and instance type. And you can also include other settings as per your requirement. Now we will simply run our Terraform command. So click on terminal to execute our Terraform command. As you can see, the folder name is two tier architecture AWS. So here we can type our Terraform commands. So first command we are using is terraform init command. So the terraform init command is used to initialize a new or the existing terraform configuration. So this command downloads the required provider plugins and sets up the backend for storing the state. So just type terraform init command. So it will initialize all the plugins and so now just type terraform init command So before that, save all the files created. Now you try to initialize all the plugins. Okay. Terraform init. So as you can see, it is initialized the pro provider plugin. The required plugins are being downloaded. So Terraform has been successfully initialized. Now, the next command which we are going to type is Terraform plan. So the Terraform plan is the command which is used to create execution plan for the Terraform configuration. So this command will show what are the resources that Terraform will create, modify, or delete when applied. So just type, first clear the screen by simply typing CLS. Now type Terraform plan. Now simply type terraform plan command. So as you can see, 21 resource is to be added. Now <laughs> to apply this terraform configuration, you need to simply type command terraform apply.
टेराफॉर्म अप्लाई So as you can see, twenty one resource is to be add zero to change and zero to destroy. Just type yes to apply our Terraform configuration. So as you can see, VPC Internet Gateway our public subnets. Our VPC has been creating state and the database instance is also creating. So as you can see, apply is complete and twenty one resource has been added successful. <laughs> Now to check our instance are working, we need to install nginx on our instance. But we will check this first on our AWS console home that our EC two instance. Are we created successfully or not? To check, <coughs> visit our AWS console. Click on EC2 instance. Then, as we can see, two instances are running. We have given our first instance name as Web One and the second instance name as Web Two. <coughs> Now we will check this. By connecting the server, so to connect the server and to install Nginx, we will use Mobex Term tool. Copy this IP address and open the Mobex tool. Click on the session, select SSH. <coughs> In remote host, type your IP address. Specify specify the username, which is Ubuntu. And in advanced SSH setting, use the private key. Two tier key pair, which I have downloaded, and then click on OK. So as you can see, it is connecting to the server, and it has connected. <coughs> so this is our first instance. So just let me clear this now. Just update our system by typing sudo apt update. After the operation of the system, we will install Nginx, and we will check on the browser by typing our IP address that Nginx is installed or not. So now, let me clear this. Type sudo apt install Nginx. So type y. So as you can see, Nginx has been successfully installed. Now just type sudo systemctl enable Nginx. So it has enabled the Nginx, and just type sudo systemctl systemctl start Nginx, which will start the Nginx service. So to check that Nginx service is running successfully or not, just type sudo service status Nginx. Sorry, sudo service Nginx status. So as you can see, it is actively running. Now these steps we need to do for this for our second instance. So let's copy our 
second instance ID. So which is this IP. Now we will again click on session, click on SSH, type our IP address for our second instance and Ubuntu. And in advanced SSH setting, we will use the private key which I have created. And it will authenticate with the private key. Sorry, with the public key. And next, we will update the system of the second instance. So, as you can see, it is simply updating the system. <clears throat> so, in first instance, you can visit to the official website of Nginx. So in CD var directory, www file, you can, and in HTML, you can see that this is the default Nginx page. Code. And now our second instance application has been completed. So we will type sudo apt. install nginx the type y now clear the screen and just type sudo system ctl which will enable the nginx Enable Nginx and just start the Nginx. So for the second instance, let us check that if Nginx service is in running state or not. So as you can see, it is actively running. Now we will just copy the both instance ID and we will check on the browser if the Nginx web server default page is loading on the loaded on the respective instance which we have created. So just copy and paste in the URL and as you can see this is the page default page of the nginx and we can see that the nginx is successfully installed and new working state so now we will check this for our first instance created we have checked it for a second instance now we will check this for first instance simply type the ip address So as you can see, first in first instance, we have successfully installed Nginx and the default page of Nginx is working successfully. Now, we will check the resources are created successfully in the AWS console. We, are, we have checked it for EC2 instance. Now we will check it for, for the VPC network and resources load balancer the target group and if the rds instance mysql instance is created or not so let us check so first we need to check vpc and the network network resources so just type vpc here. So click on VPC project. So as you can see this public subnet, there are two public subnet and two private subnet. And there are two route tables, which is project RT and MTB. And there is not one network connection, which is for IG project.
now we will check it for load balance so just type load balancer so as you can see this is the dns name so if you copy this and paste it in the url you can see the default page of the nginx so see so our load balancer so after reloading this we will check we will do another practical that if we reload this our instance one and instance two are working correctly or not we will check this so before that now we will search target group So select the project TG name and as you can see the healthy status. So this is the status of our EC2 instances, which is healthy. And here you can also see the load balance, the application load balance. So here you can see the instances which you have created will be targeted in this group successfully and the health status of both the instances is healthy now we will check for our rds database instance is created or not so simply type rds in the search search bar click on the database so as you can see the database has been created successfully so as you can see this is the engine name status is available and the instance class type we have selected is c2.my so this is the region and ability zone next we will check for next we will check the security group So click on security group so as we can see there are three security groups so one for the application load balancer one for the public and one for the private and these two are the default security group. default vpc security group so by clicking on the private security group so we can see the port range and the source and the protocol as well as the engine name for our database created which is mysql and for the public you can see the http port is 80. so our security group is also has been successfully created Now we will try to reload the load balancer so we can understand that both the instances are working successfully. So to do so, just just visit the default page which is stored in where www. So we will just edit the default Nginx web server page. So visit, we will visit the default page and edit it. So CD, it is located in the where directory www, HTML folder. 
we will list out this and we will simply edit the about default page which is index.nginxtabian.html so as you can see this is the default html code So this is the default HTML code for the Nginx server. So now we will simply type our own code in this file. So I am taking H1 header. Simply type welcome to so as you can see I have just changed the default page and just given a header as welcome to instance one for the instance one and instance two. So just we will save this. Now we will check this. But before that, click on the load balancer and copy the DNS name. So first we have seen that two Nginx server of different instances we have loaded. But by using the load balancer, it will load the instance. So as you can see, the first instance and after we reload it, then you can see the second instance. So it will manage the load. If there are number of more number of users, then it will manage the load simultaneously by using both the instances or server. So deploying a two-tier architecture in AWS with Terraform, streamlines web application infrastructure. So the separation of web and database tier orchestration though through Terraform dexterity approach and the scalability of the business. So this efficient deployment ensure optimal resource allocation and accelerate the development life cycle. So as you have learned, so for reference, we can visit the official Terraform registry. And if you have any queries, please contact us. Thank you.